Hello, welcome. Marlin here. As you all know, it's a bit of a weird time. Lots of much anticipated events are being canceled or just kind of done virtually, I guess. So weddings, proms, these types of formal events are out the window and many people are quite disappointed, understandably so. So today is a tutorial for um, cookies to maybe uh, cheer up someone in your life that's sad that they're missing out. So we're making some heart-shaped prom uh, dress and tuxedo cookies and obviously this could apply for any formal. You could make them more wedding-ish and I'm going to walk you through the step-by-step -step process to recreate these cookies. If you plan on making uh, the cookies as a set, I suggest you use colors to tie the two cookies together. Here you can see actual little uh, prom outfit where you see the girl matching with the little vest and that's what I'm going for in this particular cookie design. One of the great things about cookie decorating is how customized they can be, you know, for that recipient that, that makes them extra special. So if you can customize the dress, the the bodice part on the heart to the recipient's actual dress. It'll just make it that much more special. So I suggest you trace the cookie cutter out on paper and then use the dress as inspiration and kind of plan out your design before you get started. I'm starting the tutorial with a paper template for those of you that can't find flour and just want to practice cookie decorating. Obviously, if you're making these cookies as a gift, you want to actually bake cookies. So let's jump into today's cookie project. I'm aware that finding flour has been difficult for some of you. So I made this um, kind of faux cookie sheet for you guys. So you can print off the cookies. They're size to the true size of the cookies and pop them into a sheet protector and then you can decorate right on the plastic a little bit like you would make a royal icing transfer but you could actually see how your cookie is going to turn out. I added the guidelines to the picture of, of the cookie. So this actual cookie, my cookies that I photographed, I added the guidelines similarly to like an airbrush look. So you're working on essentially the same thing and I did add the bow, but just ignore it when you're decorating. Just fill it all in white and then you can add your royal icing transfer bow. And then you can even snap a picture and share your, your faux cookies. People won't know that they're not real ones. A royal icing transfer, what is that? Royal icing transfer is you pipe your icing on a piece of plastic or parchment paper and then when it dries you leave it dry overnight you can peel it off and you get a solid sugar decoration in your hand let me see if i can pull some out here just to show you here are some royal icing examples so this was a dot of icing that i coated in sprinkles here are some flowers that i made here are some little carrots that i made and here are some flower middles, a dot sprinkled in a non-pareil, and then you can just squish that in your icing. So as you can see here, this was a, a whole piece of it that I made. So you can make these little decorations in advance and you can quickly decorate your cookies. And also the great thing about a royal icing transfer is it really kind of like squishes in your icing and creates a different look when you add a royal icing transfer to uh, compared to how it looks when you pipe right on the icing. It looks more like a separate thing. It's quite nice. So we're going to make the bow ties that so way. Here's my tie template. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that it's the good size for your cookie. You don't want to make a whole bunch of these and then find out, oops, it wasn't the good size. Now, I usually put a little bit of royal icing on there and so that just kind of like stops the parchment paper from shifting around because that can happen. And I'm just piping, so you can follow, you see right through the, the parchment paper. And I'm going to add the middle area after. You see how you can just quickly do your 
area. I'm going to do the row of four. So you want to make sure that they're, they've got good volume so that they don't dry flat. If your icing is too runny, your royal icing transfers will not dry nice and rounded. They'll end up looking very kind of flat. I'm just, the icing is far from dry so they're not going to crack. And I'm sprinkling them in the same sugar as I did the center of the dress and the vest. So I want these to kind of match the outfit. So I'm coating them in that same sugar and I'm going to get a nice sparkly tie. So there they are. I'm going to let these dry a little bit and then I'll be able to come in and add that middle section. Ready to airbrush my guidelines on. I just run through that quickly. You don't have to worry about it being overly precise. So generally the placement, I like to work in either gold or light brown to get those lines on. And you want to hit the openings and you'll instantly get your guidelines on your cookie. Let's check it out. There, you see? takes the guesswork out of decorating. Now I'm getting the guides on for the girl version. I just broke one of my cookies. I dropped it on the floor. It literally shattered like glass. So I'm just going to have to make do of three. Let's hope the tutorial goes well. So I'm just putting that magnet so that it doesn't fly around. That's what that's for. Because this makes a wind and so this kind of holds it so that it doesn't shift as I'm airbrushing. And you see, quick and easy guides. I place my ties in this tray just so that I can pick them up and not worry about breaking them. So now I'm just adding, kind of eyeballing, a dot in the middle of my tie, so the knot, to the bow tie. You don't want to go too big. Don't forget though that the sanding sugar will bulk it up a bit. And you can do the whole thing, the whole tray. And a sprinkling. So we're gonna let these dry overnight before we can pick these up and peel them off of the backing. But it's important to work like on a tray like this so that you can move them around and not worry about them getting broken. There are literally like hundreds of different types of products to decorate your cookies and cakes and such. So normally, or the thing that I always liked was uh, sanding sugar. And I find that for cookies is kind of like, first of all, it's edible, fully edible. Number two, it's okay on the teeth because you're biting into it. And it gives just that nice kind of classic uh, look on a cookie. They've come out with this new stuff and Wilton has it as well. It's called um, sanding sugar as well, but it's really finer and much shinier. Here, this brand, I got it at uh, Marshall's or Winners, and this one is called Sugar on Top and just there's such a nice metallic look. This one is almost even a little bit whiter. So if you want to pick, this is like, you know, those uh, little packets that they have at Michael's, so you don't have to spend a lot of money. And this one here was $5, which is quite reasonable. Sprinkles can get quite expensive. I've got my cookie in the bead tray. I'm going to sparkle up the center portion of the dress and we're going to do the rest just plain. I'm cutting my piping bag and you want to test usually your um, opening on your paper towel to make sure that it's right 
and now I'm just outlining and flooding. I'm not really sectioning off the, the top to the bottom because of the sanding sugar. When you coat in sanding sugar, all that work is lost. It completely gets hidden. The sections just don't stand out. So I'm just going to fill all this in. The other great thing about sanding sugar is you don't have to worry too much about smoothing the surface too much. The sanding sugar hides all the imperfections. Okay, so I've got it there. And immediately you want to coat all this in. And I don't know if you can see how fine the particles are. And now you can wait for this to dry before moving on to the side sections. Isn't that the pretty? tuxedo, I'm doing the same thing. A little sparkle, just like the dress, so that they go together. You see like that? So it's just a V, essentially. And those guidelines really take the guesswork out. You know exactly where to pipe your lines. There. And a little sprinkling. And let that dry. I've dusted off the vest area to get the particles, the loose particles off. And now I'm just flooding the jacket. So connect that to the vest, the edge of the cookie here, and just fill. Give it a shake. That shaking is usually all that's needed to heal it up if it's the good consistency. You can do the shaking with your bowl as you're trying to get your consistency right. If it heals in the bowl, it should heal on the cookie and with your piping bag. All right, let's give that another little shake. The lapels will be hiding over here, this area, so don't worry too much about and it. now I'm just filling in the two bottom sides of the dress here. So I'm connecting to this line, outlining. Let's swirl that around to get it to heal. We want to have a nice smooth finish for the dress. And now the other side. The bottom area has had a bit of time to dry, so I'm just going to come in now and fill this top area.
You want to make sure that that's nice and level. Flip it over and do the other side, connecting to your sparkle here. Moving along with the dress, I'm adding a string of black pearls to tie into the boy, the tux version. And I'm just doing a larger dot in the center. Not huge, but larger than the others. And then I'm going to smaller up the brown line. The guide line pretty much gets hidden as you pipe the dots. You want to leave a slight gap in between them so that they remain individual dots. Like that, you see? And repeat that on this side. And add the necklace like so. Okay, so I'm just finalizing this, cleaning it up. I'm going to just connect the whole bust line here. So I'm taking my line up and then like so. And then I'm just doing a zigzag on top of my seam here to hide it. Just like that, on either side. And that cleans up the seam between the sanding sugar and the royal icing. It's tough to airbrush guidelines on black, so I'm scratching them in. I've got my template and I've got my needle tool and I'm just scratching the surface of the black and it lets me transfer that guideline. Okay, you can see it, you see? And now I'll be able to add my lapels. First thing I'm doing before I, I even add the lapels is I'm actually dusting the surface of the cookie with my um, pump brush. I have some remnants of uh, some shine in there. And I just want to create like a contrasting finish to the lapels. And so that's why I'm doing that. I don't really want a ton of shine, but I do want a little bit of a difference between my um, here, my pump brush wasn't here. We'll just there. It's prom, so it can be shiny. It's not like a wedding. Okay. One of the surefire ways to make sure that your black doesn't leach into your white is for them to not be touching. So I'm leaving a hairline separation between the black and the white. I'm adding my lapels now in two sections. I want to have a bit of a of um, separation at the the points there that they have on them. I'm trying to follow my scratches that I made. They're hard to see.
A shake and then this side All right, so that's it for right now. I'll let this dry and then I'll come in and do the bottom ones. Time to finalize the lapels. So I'm just adding this last section. I'm following those scratches that I made in the surface carefully. So right here at the vest and then Hiding that crack, that little scratch that we made, and just fill all this. You don't want this terribly rounded, so you want to fill it, but not super puffy. The other side. And they don't necessarily have to touch at the point there. Fill all this in. And that's it. And let that dry. And now I have my little flowers. They dried overnight. They're hard. Don't attempt to color on fresh fondant. It has to be somewhat dry for you to be able to kind of press into it without damaging it. And now with my marker, I'm able to come in and just gently pigment the leaf section of the decoration. These markers are great paintbrush kind of a thing. Not really great for detail, like if you wanted to make lines, they get very fat. But to paint stuff, I do like them. Now I'm going to actually pigment the flower. I've got kind of a pointy um, paintbrush and I'm just touching a few drops or a few particles, I should say, of the petal dust in the middle there. And I'm just gently tapping on the flower like that. You don't want to overload it. I just want to dust it with the pigment like that and you see it's a bit darker in the middle and I'm going to use an empty airbrush to remove the excess particles on my decoration and I find that a little bit of color just brings out the details or else it just you don't see really much of the flower. Oh, well, here's the flower. I'm holding it because they do fly away when um, they're little like this and I'm just removing the excess in the middle there. So you're hitting with the dust. And it removes the, the excess color. So here are the, the flowers are done. I can move those out of the way. Now let's look at the bow ties. I just want to show you how easily it comes off of the parchment paper. And there is the tie. I'm not sure yet how I feel about them. Let's see how they look on our cookie. So it's quite blingy. It's not bad. I'm going to try here. I made also some just plain black ones and I just think that looks a little bit more 
elegant I want to say and then if we add our little our little flower you see how that comes to life so I think I'm actually going to use the black ones the silver is maybe just a little bit too much I like the black one but you know these are cute too they they could be cute on let me see on the girls dress sometimes you'll see a bow right there but what I like about it here is that part of it is visible on the um, on this you know on the gray so it kind of makes it stand out a bit more or right here at the waist that's not bad either right here so let's stick our parts on now I had mentioned about royal icing transfers do you see how it's just like more separate and looks completely different than when you pipe right on the cookie so I personally really like the look of a royal icing transfer for that really kind of dimensional aspect of it and I'm attaching in the same gray sometimes when you add the icing to secure things to your cookies the icing will ooze out just from the pressure you see so if it's in the same base color, well, it doesn't show as much when it's oozing out. It's less kind of really apparent. And now for this one here, I wanted to add a few details in white to add the bow. So let me just pipe my lines here. I wanna add on either side right here. Whoop, my line is curling on either side here just a straight line like that okay and now to the back I'm adding my white icing again for that oozing aspect I'm pressing that in to my tuxedo and then I'm going to add some tiny buttons to the shirt here. Just like that. And now to secure the flower, I did look at placement of the flower on a lapel. And usually they do add them I, from what I saw here at the bottom section. But I kind of like it more there. So uh, I don't know. I think I might it's not bad right there so again you want to attach stuff in the color of the base icing in case of oozing so that you don't have that showing and I just added a smidgen of icing to my fondant element and there it is attached to my cookie so there's the little set now for a little recap obviously the most devastating event to cancel is your own wedding you could make a whole wedding party set if you wanted let's take a look at the dress version a few alternatives instead of sanding sugar in that middle section you could stencil that in royal icing you could stencil it in airbrush you could have the outside sections actually have the finish instead of the middle you could do the middle in kind of like a um, skin tone and then come in and pipe some lace infinite possibilities use your creativity and now for the tux or suit version you could obviously do just a tie as opposed to a bow tie and you could skip the vest the little flower could be done just with a little dot. You do just a dot of icing and then a swirl on top once that dot is dry. And you could make little royal icing transfer flowers to add to the lapel if you don't have that fondant mold. Here is the set once again. If this is an idea you want to attempt but you're not sure how they'll turn out, you don't want to kind of like waste any uh, material, you could certainly practice on that sheet and pipe on a paper protector and really you'll get a great kind of sample of what the finished product's going to look like and then bake your cookies and make that um, cute.
cute little prom set and brighten someone's day. So I hope you enjoyed today's cookie project. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to post them in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks so much for being here and I'll see you next time.